people try to laugh at mahatma gandhi or people make fun of him because fun they have him. not understood what he did during those times over there i actually if i tell you something you will be very surprised mahatma gandhi's autobiography my experiments with truth is a huge learning experience other thing when my students in class you know when i ask them what do you want to become you know once you graduate nobody says that they want to become a politician but everybody has a complaint on a politician on something and a lot of them aspire to go outside the country and study which yes you need that exposure and everything but often we tend to forget where we come from what th- this land has provided us whatever corruption might be there anything and i urge my students usually to come back and say if you are running away because we have bad politicians then you are the problem not the politician because if you have a problem with the politician then you should be sitting there right let's take some sort of responsibility right you got to feel credible you got to feel responsible for this country and get into politics but then they have a hundred questions which i might not have an answer for but for somebody who's who's been a, a amazing uh, police policeman and now moving into uh, politics so strongly i want to ask you how do you motivate uh, the next generation of people irrespective of the layers that they have to cross through how they do you are not them? wrong they are absolutely right in quitting and going out of the country they are absolutely right it because our generation has not created a congenial atmosphere inside this country over there see that is the reason i quit my service i had 3 years of service left over with me to get inside politics over there because i want good people to come into politics see if you blame see finally you whether you like it or not this country is not run by doctors engineers chartered accountants lawyers or intellectuals it is still run by politicians over there correct and the nation and the family spends huge amount of resources in creating a doctor engineer lawyer etc but we don't create uh, invest anything in creating a politician who runs the country over there most often lumen elements are the strong arm tactics people or people with bags of ill gotten money are the ones who find their way into politics over there we should give up that fear that politics is for to do politics you need i don't have any money i don't have a caste uh, strength also over there i can only say that i have been a good police officer and i will try my best to get good people to be a part of public uh, administration over there so you means i am showing what little courage i have over there and uh, i only hope to light few more candles and make the room much more brighter over there so unless and until the country does not have good leaders we cannot progress people will leave the country and go and we cannot sit back on our past laurels and say we are what a great country we were a great country we <laughs> are or we may become a great country later but not with the set of politicians who are we polarize in the name of religion we see we are a multicultural whether you like it or not then we say that no it is you should talk about one religion as see youngsters are becoming fearful they get scared when they are reminded about their caste and religion and they say we don't want all to listen to all this thing over there they just feel that if they can score some marks they would prefer to get out of this country <laughs> but we can preserve public order by creating a good environment so i have started and uh, i am trying my best to see how many other people i can bring into public and probably not uh, as well, i hope fully during my lifetime i should be able to bring about a good change i am quite optimistic over there and uh, instead of saying that you should be a good doctor good engineer good uh, chartered accountant good whatever uh, once again there is a doctor in south africa who teaches his who runs a school and tells his students that you should be good politicians and it is not politics we need leaders and statesmen correct not politicians i think that's the right word yeah. to put it yeah. because a leader starts with his own yeah. self and then moves to changing the world not because he has to but because he wants to True. right S- sir i've also gotten to know that you're an avid reader and they say readers are leaders automatically can you tell us i try my best to get educated <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us three books that have genuinely changed your perspective in life see one is uh, richard greenback's book on power okay 
power. And then he's written a book on mastery. Both okay. of them have been uh, very good books that I have. Uh, then uh, since I have, was in the army and I was in the police over there, the Sun Tzu's uh, The Art of War. Oh, wow. The, the Art of War. And I've always uh, read books which are biographies. Biographies. I've read a number of biographies. What's and, your favorite, uh, sir? I, actually, if I tell you something, mm, you'll be very surprised. Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography, My Experiments with Truth, is a huge learning experience. People try to laugh at Mahatma Gandhi or people make fun of him because fun they have him. not understood what he did during those times over there. And same thing with uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru's uh, book also. The, uh, he writes the history of uh, India over there. And then I have read the biography of a lot of uh, Nobel laureates also. And sometimes the leadership qualities of uh, Alexander the Great, the leadership qualities of Genghis Khan, the leadership qualities of uh, Pulkeshi, our uh, Bagalkot uh, and Badami emperor over there, the leadership qualities of Alexander the Great, hmm. and uh, I read Barack Obama, mm -hmm. then uh, Mother Teresa, then uh, our uh, South African uh, Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela. See, these are about Mahatma Gandhi. I only want to tell you five things for the benefit of the readers. See, Mahatma, you want to be a leader, travel. Travel, travel, travel. Either by cycle or by walk or by car or by train. Hmm. If you have too much of money, do by aeroplane, or you will only be seeing the skies. That's all. <laughs> but travel on the road. You will see so much of culture, so much of food, so much of people, and you learn. That is one. Travel means you will be talking with people, listening to them and they will be talking. That is number one. Number two, write. Do a lot of writing. Mahatma Gandhi did a lot of writing. He wrote, he edited the Young India over there. Then number three, speak like you are training people on Toastmasters. So what you have learned, speak and hear. Three things over there. Number four, be a good fundraiser for a good cause you become a very good leader over there. You don't have to get millions to do that over there. Makes sense. Then, fifth, surround yourself with people who are in media, who are in social media, mainstream media, or intellectuals. You listen to them, and you talk with them, and they talk about you, and you talk about them, and they are influencers. So I found that these are five pristine qualities which Mahatma Gandhi did as a leader and all these things, all these five things didn't cost him money. Of course, traveling. So when someone asked Mahatma Gandhi, why do you always travel by third class? He said, because I travel by third class because there is no fourth class. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So this is what I can tell. And now we all spend money in foreign universities here and there trying to become good leaders, good nation, negotiators. People are the best. Speak to as many, speak to the old, speak to the young, speak to the rich, speak to the poor, speak to lawyers, speak to doctors. Don't lose an opportunity to listen and to speak. Hmm. So these five qualities of Mahatma Gandhi, which I said. So when you read biographies, no, so this is what I pick out from biography wow. over there. When you read Alexander the Great over there, Alexander the Great, how he inspires an army that has left their homes for over two decades and they are on the verge of a revolt and how he inspires them and puts courage into those people to say, no, we are going to fight over there. And how Napoleon Bonaparte over there, being a short man, an unimpressive person, how he was able to uh, fight with Horatio Nelson and uh, being a leader, being a dictator, even these dictators, I have read Mein Kampf, uh, uh, Adolf Hitler's uh, biography Book. also, uh, bi biography about it. So. so the more biographies you read, you know, it gives you the decision-making quality. So I would urge youngsters, 
want to be good leaders, good decision makers in your life is that read as many biographies as possible to give you. I have seen, uh, in fact, I have had one of the rarest, the rare privilege of having been the student of Mother Teresa over there. Wow. So, because I was studied in Patna and Mother Teresa was running a, oh, the, the old poor house and uh, we used to go on Saturdays and Sundays to work with her and uh, sometimes the sister Nirmala who succeeded her now. So, we would be working there, mother would come around 12 o'clock with about 15, 20 people over there and said that Nirmala prepare food for them over there. Mother, why are you bringing so many people? There is no food here. She said, he is going to give. And I have seen from somewhere or the other, within a short time, some businessman or a local Marwadi would send vegetables and rice without your mother asking for that. You do your work. Things will take care of itself. We are all the time worried about those things which we can't control. Hmm. We don't do those things which we can control. That is our problem. I think that's a very nice answer and I think you are some Most youngsters, no, they are upset because the whole world is not cooperating with them. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? You do your job, the whole Correct. world will fall in place. Fall in place. I mean, if you get the man right, the world also becomes uh, right you, automatically. You, know, you correct yourself. Don't true, try sir. to change somebody else. Mm -hmm. True, sir. Very true. Sir, now I want to ask you, what made you transition into politics? Why did you choose politics? You did say you want to impact people at a larger scale, but... Why did you choose politics and why did you choose this specific party which is not the highlighted party in, in, in India or in all states uh, across India uh, where you have a BJP, you have a Congress and all of these things. Why did you choose what many people wouldn't have chosen? Good question. <laughs> See, I've already been the Commissioner of Police Bangalore City, mm -hmm. faced the biggest challenge in the service over there. After having left the position of Bangalore City Police Commissioner, I would have been I was sitting uh, in administration and pushing files in other place till I would have retired over there. Means it is almost semi-retirement over there for I had about three and a half years left with me. So it is better to exit immediately with that energy that is number one. Because I didn't want to waste my time sitting on a chair and a desk looking for work inside one department only and wanted to have a work on a larger canvas. And there my work was only me, my office and uh, limited. Here, the whole world is your office over there. Mm. Wherever you sit down, that's your office over there. <laughs> sit in a park, the park is your office. Sit at a bus stop, that's your office. Sit next to a public toilet, that's your office over there. So that is my second. Third, why this particular party you're asking? See, I've got very good friends in both BJP, Congress and JDS. I deliberately chose this party because this is the newest party on the horizon. And this party is trying to make its space into the political arena. And all the bigger people are not allowing an inch of territory. They are trying to muzzle, stifle this party by making baseless allegations against the founder and the people over there. Nobody is of course going to welcome, if anybody is trying to enter your house, you will make all efforts to throw them out of <laughs> Makes there. sense. So everybody is trying. So I wanted to be in this particular party alone. This party doesn't have money. This party has people with very high ideals and who are ready to go to any length to do work for the country. It, this is not even 10 years old. It is already in power in two states. Janta Dal Secular has never been in power for the last 25 years on its own. The last it was in power was during J.H. Patel's time over there or when Devagoda was the Prime Minister or the Chief Minister. Whereas in 10 years we have been in power in two states, Delhi as well as Punjab. And for all probability we should be able to make a very good impact in Gujarat. And we have been winning elections in across states. We have won elections in Chandigarh, we have won elections in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Assam and in several places. That is because our ideals are our greatest strength. Money is not our strength. Hmm. Today the Bharati Janta Party has got too much of money, excessive money it has got. And today, as you said, not being highlighted. What is it that is not being highlighted? They are talking all kinds of negative things about our uh, national convener Arvind Kejriwal. What is, they say he is a Khalistani, he is pleasing minority, he is giving free. But is anybody saying he is corrupt? He does not know administration? Is anybody saying that? Hmm. And what is it that we are doing? We are only forward looking party. We are not looking back and saying you did emergency, you gave Ladakh, 
you were uh, you Indira <laughs> Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru. You had a girlfriend. You were doing this. You did that. We know we are we are not bothered about the past. Uh, you are you are you are uh, halal. We, we are looking in the front. We will set right all the problems that this country is facing only with the strength of education and good health. And this is what we talk about. See, the earlier regimes they invested heavily on. Uh, higher education, not on primary education, because they wanted a group of clerks to run their administration. And unfortunately, we continued it for last 75 years also. We should have invested our resources on primary education and built strong boys and girls who would have found their way ahead. We never did. That is what we are trying to do now. We are building world class, not even world class, best quality schools for our own children who are at the poorest to the poor level. Hmm. And then we are building exceedingly good hospitals where the healthcare is affordable. Hmm. Nothing is free. We may be saying it is free, but it's all your taxes that we are giving it back to you. Correct. The only thing is that we have successfully been able to plug corruption and uh, uh, cost escalation delays over there. Hmm. And you are getting back your own uh, money. So that is the reason I am in this party over there to see that we are very, very new. and. The existing parties are finding it very difficult to tolerate us over there. Hmm. <laughs> so we have been successfully, and we are building the narratives. I am not reacting to narratives of uh, BJP or Congress over there. Congress wants an appeasement policy. BJP wants a single community policy. So I am neither on the left nor on the right over there. I am holding a centrist path over there. And I am looking ahead. I will give you education, give you good medical facilities, create jobs, create the uh, good quality of climate these are this is my agenda over there hmm. not saying that okay you elect me i will give you this much of reservation to minorities i want to give you to please this one over there people have got a right to take care of their own personal needs i don't want to uh, and moreover there is something called uh, 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 what you say baduku matu bhavane baduku is living bhavane is only emotions over there so these parties, they make a living out of people's emotions. We want to say that we want to talk about your living and your future. That is mm. the difference over there. And this is a next generation party. The 18, 25 year olds, of, they will not get influence. They may get carried away because of their parents, etc. Either appeasement of minorities or extreme rightism. We don't want to get into We only want to build. What we are going to do may not have impact tomorrow morning. It will have impact after five years or ten years when we build a good quality school over there True. and reduce corruption. And you are mentioning about it. See, the biggest problem in this country is that nobody gets punished. As a police officer, I'm telling you, nobody gets punished. Everybody gets warned. Everybody gets advised. That's all over there. So only when there is a fear of law, there will be a respect for law. There is no fear of law, there is no respect for law because everybody gets pardoned over there. Rapists are left to go free over there. Murderers are ready to go free over there. This doesn't happen elsewhere over there. And in our system, we want young people, qualified people to be in public administration and leadership position. That's why I've been uh, looking around for and trying to goad young qualified people to be in politics. You look at the world all around over there. How old is the Netherlands Prime Minister? She's a 37-year-old uh, young lady over there. Look at uh, New Zealand. Young ladies. Uh, in our country, we have all old, sagging fellows who are becoming uh, Prime Ministers and Chief Ministers over there. True. We want young people to run this country over there. Hmm. Youngsters should run this country. 18, 25-year-olds should be a part of uh, decision-making. They should vote. They should participate in what committee meetings over there. They should be asking questions to the bureaucrats. Why is this road not good? Why is there pothole? Why does this bus not come on time? Why is this uh, electricity failure? Why is the water not coming? Why is it leaking over there? So all point, only when if you ask, they also become part of it. Look at Barack Obama at the, at the age of 50, he had already finished two terms. Now he is giving lectures and he is part of universities over there. Over there. And he is not coming back. Here we have people till 90 years still commenting and becoming a power center over there. <laughs> Sir, I think uh, what you made, what you what you d did bring to light makes a lot of sense. And do you think technology in the hands of these youngsters is now going to have a lot of power shift? Because 
at least 10 years ago, India was not very familiar with a Facebook or an Instagram or, a, you know, these social media sites. But do you feel that this is the catalyst and the neutralizer for these youngsters to actually really showcase in power? Because recently, I was uh, listening to a podcast similar to this by this very dynamic youngster called Ranveer Allahabad. He was one of the top YouTubers from Mumbai. And he was saying it's not so far away before a lot of these YouTubers, Instagram influencers have so much power to, you know, yield in their own hands that they can enter politics quicker than what the previous generations have suffered yeah, through. Do you, what do you think about that? I absolutely agree. See, when I travel in North Karnataka over there, there are a lot of these YouTube influencers whom I come across over there. And if I bring, if they accompany me in any of these uh, small meetings over there, they are greeted with a lot of uh, aplomb by the people around because their people have seen them on the social media over there, over there. So these Instagram uh, celebrities, influencers, see what is on digital world and what is in actual world. See, you can be, do all those things, uh, sitting in a studio and recording yourself and doing all. But you should be also be able to take instant decisions on the <laughs> road also, no? Very true. So, those don't, those things don't come. So, you could either be very successful or you could fail also over there. But I only hope that someone who is doing all these things in a studio will be able to do it well when they are in a proper, uh, uh, in faced with a problem also. Yes, it is possible to do. And in days to come, I'm telling you, now with hologram also coming over there, more social media will be coming over there. In fact, this interview can be conducted, me sitting in my office and uh, you sitting in your office, but people will think that you and I are sitting in front of each other and talking <laughs> when correct. the hologram comes correct, over there. Correct, correct. And hologram can be used for so many things over there. Correct. And uh, more technology, more social media, but are you ready to handle that or not? To handle all these things, once again, you have to come back to your basics. 100%. Sir, I think a lot of what you said is great and I'm going to, we've come to the last part of the podcast. I have just one question before we go ahead. Um, in fact, two questions and I, we'll keep the first one short. What do you think is the biggest problem in the education system right now? Because you said your party wants to focus on primary education and strengthen the root system. Because a lot of what we see is on the surface. You know, you people try strengthening the stem of the plant, but the real strength is in the roots of it, right? So what is it that you want to change in this part? See, today you must be re seeing in newspaper that every caste and every community is clamoring for reservation. Because people have got fear. They're not confident that they'll do well. Mm -hmm. They want a support of a reservation to mm -hmm. do well. Earlier mm -hmm. it was constitution and given it only for SCs and STs. Today everybody wants it. It is a clear indication that the education system and the home and the neighborhood have not done their job. Mm. And we have emaciated weak men and women who can't take care of themselves but who need a prop. My take would be that strengthen the primary education system so well. I was a part of the United Nations and I have traveled to a few countries in Europe over there. Their primary education is so robust, so strong and with so much of pride that a village having a population of about 300 or 400 has a huge primary school with a lot of play, playing facilities, with swimming pool and some of the best teachers over there. Hmm. We neglect, we have neglected this as a result of which finally when the emaciated individual comes, uh, becomes about 26, 27 years, you say you should make him a deputy commissioner, you should make him a pilot, you should make him, poor kid, you never brought it up well. Now you are putting that kid and making it an object of ridicule. If you had educated that kid and given all that facilities, it would be on par with everybody else over there Correct. and not be an object of ridicule over there. 100%. And they would have done very well over there. Mm -hmm. And then you say that, no, 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 he or she came from reservation, that's why they would be So, if you strengthen the foundation, everything gets taken care of. So, so the foundation includes infrastructure, yes. includes teachers, includes... Your school, your mm -hmm. school is the best place. Often, as, as, as a police officer or as a former police officer, I say that if the home and school and the neighborhood have not done their job, the problem lands in the police station. Wow. I think that's a beautiful quote. Yeah. And you've used this even in your TED talk as well. Yes. Quite strongly about the neighborhood, about the neighborhood and the I said. importance See, of it. If the mother and father 
In fact, I, whenever I speak in schools over there, I tell whenever children are there that don't fight in front of your children. Hmm. You may be having arguments, but don't become abusive. Correct. And then don't start doing things which you tell your child to do and you don't do. Very true. Lead by and example. Third, don't if you tell your child to be morally good and if you do extramarital relationships etc etc and you break the house over there the child becomes a uh, care of a single parent over there and when a child loses one parent over there to that extent the child has lost lot of uh, what you say nutrition of growth and that nutrition that deficiency in nutrition will show and i have seen you go to the prison and see the the inmates are all coming from broken homes hmm. father is a drunkard over there or the mother would have ended up cheating her husband over there single or divorced or they would have fought or coming from poorer families why are we poor because we are poor because we can't study we have no money hmm. but today if people have become aspirational even those at even uh, those who are the lower lowest rung of the society they want their children to study so those who are not able they send them to government schools but you don't make government schools good you again come back to the same level same thing yeah. so it's sort of the government itself is promoting this kind of poverty and then it says we want to remove poverty <laughs> very true sir now your party aam aadmi party in in uh, like you said punjab and delhi is in power but for for a south indian uh, city and state to have a party like this in power why do you think a party like this is not coming into power in a state like ours in karnataka where one where we where we have very good educated people we have we are seeing a lot of transformations do you think there's any specific area of uh, concern see merely education is not enough you should have compassionate grounded leadership also over there Hmm. probably we are on the process of building that hmm. when we have to create young leaders over there having one leader is not enough over there we have to decentralize create opportunities spread the word around take people into confidence so we are on our way probably we may not have done it sufficiently but we are doing it we will do it okay sir thank you so much from the bottom of my heart i think this is one of the best conversations i've had in the recent past and i'm sure a lot of people watching this will seek inspiration direction and motivation to not just change themselves but also change a wonderful country like india i really really acknowledge the contribution that you've done to our society and people you're truly an inspiration and hero and it's my honor and pleasure to have you on this couch right next to me and uh, i couldn't have asked for more so thank you so much from the bottom thank of thank you heart. so much only one message to the youngsters you have done so much for yourself do something for the country yes, thank you i'm sure sir thank you so much sir yeah.